So good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining today. My name is Rob. I'm going to take you through a demonstration about Vero and how it aids in managing compliance and also consistency within AEC. So I thought I'd just give a brief overview of Avero for those that have not seen the platform before. Um, so Avero is the only cloud-based document drawing and email management system that's been built on top of Microsoft 365, specifically for architects, engineers, and in the AEC industry. So the thing that our customers like the most about Avero is that it uses Microsoft's ecosystem. And that then fulfills a crucial part of the work, which is maintaining accuracy, and reducing risk around project information. So Avero is an application that's built on top of Microsoft 365. It uses SharePoint to store the information and being built this way means that Avero looks and it feels like a Microsoft application, but it means that new users find that very intuitive. Microsoft um, and Avero working together means that you're also using your own uh, Microsoft single sign-on. So that means it's easily accessible. Um, and, um, and, and then so it feels like another Microsoft application, such as Word. And then finally, just being integrated into Microsoft 365 um, means that you can use all those project-related um, Microsoft apps that you use all the time, such as Outlook, Teams, Word, Excel, and, and others that you're there creating that project information. Um, but then using Avero as that one central location for that. And then finally, um, using Avero means that all of that project information stays inside your Microsoft tenancy. So instead of us taking that out as a normal software company would do and holding that information securely somewhere else, you've got total control. So that means that the reliance on another company looking after information has just been diminished, completely removed in fact. So you'll then have access to all of your information for as long as you're a Microsoft customer for, and you have access through that. So security standpoint, absolutely fantastic within there. It also means that you're not relying on that common data environment of someone else, maybe a client, is it? And we hear about that quite regularly. So as project information software at Vero also helps project teams track every single version of all sent and received drawings and documents. Um, and we also have an automated issue register that then helps with that. We can also within at Vero um, make accessing complete version history of files really simple, whilst also ensuring that the challenges of using folders, particularly finding information in that folders is overcome. So this means that your team members are find it far easier to access the most recent um, or an up-to-date documentation exactly when they need to, and it takes very little time to be able to do that. And that very also uses a defined naming scheme for all of our projects. So we have ISO 19650 that's built into our Vero, and we maintain all of that. So that's a, a standard that's becoming very, very commonplace across the AEC industry. However, if you wanted to use another scheme, you can do. So you can use your own scheme that you use as currently if you wish to do that. You could use a client mandated scheme if they are asking you to do that. Um, and that um, means that then we're firstly uh, maintaining an accuracy, an accu accuracy of information um, by using that standard. But also if you then do have to upload to a, a client CD, it makes it really easy because you know you've already got that name correct. So... It's more than just documents. Email can be the lifeblood of many projects with like lots of key decisions being communicated by email. And frequently documents from third parties are also delivered in that same way. So Avero provides an, an Outlook integration, which I'll show you, which and, and that allows a really simple process for filing emails into a common location. Um, and then that shared place that anybody who's a member of that particular project can go and see that, pro that email information. So um, Avero also provides technology to stop those emails being filed more than once, which means you've not got duplication of emails, you've not got duplication of documents, um, and, and no duplication, therefore, in your projects, which is fantastic. So finally, uh, just before I swap over, just to go and show you the, the demonstration of Avero, um, this is just a selection of our, some of our fantastic clients. So loads, lots and lots of clients that we have within there um, and and all different sizes of businesses as well. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close that down and I'm going to move over. So um, what you'll see here is um, at Vero and immediately you'll see it looks just like a Microsoft application. And it is because we're a developer, a Microsoft, develop, Microsoft developer. And what we then do is build a Power App that then sits on top of your Microsoft tenancy. So way that we do that is we then install the application and create a hub site, which is at Vero. So all of your project related information sits inside this hub site. And then all of the at Vero functionality is then able to be applied into those projects. So you can continue to use SharePoint however you wish to outside of that. And then, and then we have then the container that sits with all your project information inside it. So you'll see that within here, we're in the hub site at the moment. Um, and what I'll be then able to do is go over to the, the projects that I have here, and I can see a full list of the projects with all of the information that I need to then see against it's a sector, services, fee arrangement, the project director, who the client company is, and then things around the project status. Avera also builds a full contact database. So you can see all of the different contacts that we've got inside of here. And if I click on the first one there, you'll see that um, we have the contact details um, within there. And then we also have the projects that Alan is working on. So I can see immediately from any of these people inside of here exactly who we're working on the projects alongside. And then also the companies that we're working alongside within there. So you can see a full list of companies. The manager section is very much an administration section, not really where most of the um, the general users will be will be spending any time. And the, and the, what we do within the manager section is is make it really simple to create consistency within the projects. So what we do within here is um, for each time that a customer comes and joins our Vero, we then work with them alongside our onboarding team to develop what would be like a master template for the project. And what that then consists of is, how do I want the project to look? What navigation menu items do I want down on the left-hand side? Um, how do I want the, um, what naming scheme do I want to use? So as I said a, a little bit earlier, we have ISO 19650 built into the platform, but you can use any naming scheme that you wish to. And you could just use 19650 or your preferred naming scheme for all of your projects. Or you could just have a, the occasional one that's that's different with the clients. So we start to build that naming scheme. We start to build the navigation menu items. And when we start to add in things like what templates for Word do we want to use? So some familiar things might be the agenda or a site visit document that you use regularly. Well, that's fine. We add those into our Vero at the hub site here. And then those are then maintained from here. And what that then means is that as we create a new project, those documents are then cascaded into the project so that everyone is always using the correct template, the latest template. And I'll show you exactly how that works. So when we gather together, how do we want the project to look? Do we want a Teams um, channel to be created? Do we want the email inbox or mailbox for that project to be created? What do we want the templates to look like? We gather all of that together and then when I then press to create a new project, that then creates that new project exactly the same way. So if I pressed it five times, I then have five projects that are absolutely identical, just with a slightly different email mailbox and a different name. So by doing it that way, it means that we start to get real consistency inside of SharePoint. So that's the first starting point of why at Vero is, is great because you can build that consistency and build that um, structure for all of your projects very, very easily. It's just one press of the button then it then creates that project for you. So I have all of my projects listed down here. If I go to this tab, I've already opened up one of my projects. So as I go into the project, what you'll see on the left-hand side down here is we have um, all of the navigation menu items I just discussed there. So you can choose what's important to you as a, as a as your company, and then you choose what menu items that you would want on here. So in this demonstration, I've got quite a few different menu options because actually they're all relevant to the way that I want to run my projects. So I've got the project contacts. I've gone and got the record section, which is the really the, the heart of out of error, and I'll come back and spend most of the time inside there. We've got an approval process, which I'll show you. 
And then we've got the received files, transmitted files, and oh, sorry, transmittals, and then formal issue register. And this is all about incoming and, and, and outgoing information and how, how we track that. So I'll talk to you about that as well. We then have some search functionality. And then we have things like checklists, which are like workflows um, and the evidence-based checklists that I can show you as well. Because we're built on top of Microsoft, the, the then the, the real benefit to our customers is, is the way that our programs then talk together. So um, you can see here that we've got um, the inbox. So that's just taken us to Outlook um, so that we can see the project inbox. We can then see the project inside of Teams, which I'll show you afterwards. And then if you've got them work in progress files that you've got on SharePoint, you can store them in there. If you want to use OneNote or uh, Microsoft Projects, you can have a link in there. In fact, you can link to anything that you think is important as a um, online location. So you can set all of your projects up to be really specific to how you want to work. As I go into the record section, so what we've got inside of this record section is every single file, a document, photo, whatever it is that's related to this particular project. And they all sit inside of the record section within here. So as I go down, I can see that we've got all of the different documentation, all the different information that I've got related to this particular project. Now, I can be very confident that when I then go through and click onto one of these pieces of information, that Vero will show me the very latest version of that because it's some fantastic versioning control that's built into Vero. So I've just clicked on there and I can go through and have a look at this, this, uh, this plan. I can see through the title block, I can see all the information within there directly from my browser. And when I go back into Vero, the reason that I'm confident that that is the very latest version is that Avero only shows the very latest version because it's got a fantastic version control inside of here. So to give you a little bit more detail, this is um, this. These are the documents that sit inside of this record. There's three different types of document that I can see that I uploaded within here. So if I go to that very first one down here and put, click on the information symbol, what then it will show me is that we I uploaded this information on the 20th of July and it was uploaded by myself. I can see a little bit of information about the size and the scale. I can see the status of that information. I can also see whether it was transmitted. So did I issue that? Did I send that out to anybody? I can also see whether there's an approval process, and which there was, and it was approved. And then I can see also the, see the reviewed um, dates for that. So looking at that then, I know that when I go to issues, we'll see that there wasn't any issues for that piece of information. I can see the different types of uh, document that then uh, are file type that are then inside of this record. So we've got DWF, DWF a DWG, and a, and a PDF. So this looks like something that's come across from um, Revit AutoCAD. It did have a review process that was myself um, and any notes that I would have had um, related would be in there and any markup files if I had attached them inside of there. And that then allows me to see every single time this, this um, particular record has been updated, I can see the full history all the way through, right the way through to the very latest one that within here. Um, was the 20th of September last year. I checked, approved with recent alterations inside of there, and I can see that actually it was issued out as part of issue 31. So versioning control inside of Vero is really simple, really nice and easy for you to then be able to go to any piece of information and be able to see exactly what happened through the life uh, um, cycle of that piece of information. So one question that I usually get when I'm doing a demonstration for um, a, cost, a potential customer is how do we then find information? If we've got 400 different records inside of here, how would I find the information? And this is where um, typically people are moving across from folder systems. So um, in a folder system, what you'll then have is um, a hierarchy of all those different folders. And that can be quite a consuming task to try and set those up initially. But also, it's then sometimes a case of, is the right information sitting inside there? And if it is, how easy is it for me to find? And that's typically the challenge that, that, I, that I hear from our um, prospective clients is, 
how do I find the information? It's dumped inside a folder. I find it very difficult. And when I realize that it's not there, then I have to go on and don't have that, um, that discussion. So what we do inside of Vero is we do not use folders for that particular reason. So what we do have is a fantastic way of, of taking that um, and, and really bringing it into 2023. So what we do is we set up views and each of these views is customized by our customer. So you would have whatever view is specific to you individually. So you can see inside of here that I've got some different views. So maybe I just want to look at any of the Word documents that have been created. Maybe I want to look at um, an initial status. So I want the status code to be S0 or A1. And I can start to look at the information that sits inside that, um, inside that particular status. Um, and well, maybe that's an unapproved status. Maybe it is that I want to have a look at just the architect records, the engineer records, or I want to go through and um, and look at approved and architect. So there's lots of different ways that we can go and do this. And in fact, this is almost limitless in how you can set these views up because using the filters inside of here, each of our customers will set up metadata against what they want to then be able to, to filter against. So each piece of information that we then have inside these records can have those metadata fields against it. So I can be really specific in deciding, okay, what do I want to see inside of here? I want to see um, information by, uh, let's say by Artvero, because I know that I've got a lot of information that I've added. I also just want to see architect records. Um, and I also just want to see from zone zero, let's say zero, zero and zero, one. And then once I've then got to that place, I'm like, that's that's great with me. I can then go through and I can just save that view. So I can put live demo view, save that. And that's now a view that I can then go backwards and forwards from so I can decide exactly what I want to see within there. So by comb combining the metadata and the views, actually we can make this really easy to find information and then be able to then filter to see just those little packets of information as well. Searching for information is another area which is fantastic and I'll, I'll talk you through that, but it, they're almost intertwined a little bit. So I just thought I'd just touch on that at this point. So, Showing you how um, the information looks whilst it's inside of here. And I've also um, discussed um, how we then go through and filter and, and change the views on there. Um, adding information into our barrel is really simple. We can go through and we can just do simple upload. So we can go through um, and, and add information into here. So this is just a drag and drop. So we just drag and drop those files inside of um, inside of our barrel. So let's say that these are files that we've received. So there's two different ways we can bring files in. There's files that we've created and there's files that have been sent to us. So when we created them, what we want to be doing is dragging the information in and then having out there, do some checking on that for me. So if I then go through into um, here, what I can then do is I can drag that information in and you saw that it just changed color. So what Avero has recognized immediately is that we've got some information that's not correct in here. And actually, this is just an accident from my perspective. I've put some information that should be in a different project and Avero has picked that up. On the second item down here, um, what Avero is doing is it's double checked that the name is correct and it's recognized that we should have four digit um, code, so five character code um, within there and that I've made a mistake in the six digits on there. So I can remove that from there. And then what it then will allow me to then do is just go through and um, and add the title into here and then add a revision inside of there. If I've added this information in before, then what Avero will do is it will pick up the title because it will have seen that before. It will look at the last revision and then it will give it the, it will suggest that it's the next revision number. So if it sees it as revision number P01, it will then suggest it's P02. Um, um, whatever way that you name those revisions. So we bring that information in really simply into Avero in that way. We also have integrations into Revit and also AutoCAD so that you can then work inside of Revit and AutoCAD at the point when you want to send that detail into Avero and create a formal record of the AutoCAD file, then you then send those across. And what it will then do is it will take the information from the title block and then you can then 
create that inside of our barrel. So you bring in um, the DWF, DWG and PDF, and that will then be created as a record. Or if it's an update, then it will create it as the next revision inside of our barrel. We also have email um, where we can then, any information that's received um, or sent will also be tracked. So I'll, I'll go through that in just a moment um, for you. And then what we then have is the ability to create information directly from Atvero. So this is one of the features that our customers really like is because we're so, um, because we because we're built inside of Microsoft, um, what that allows us to then be able to do is um, use Word, Excel, PowerPoint um, directly from Atvero. So when I click on Word within here, what this will then do is it'll start to then you ask me about the templates that I want to create. So if you remember back in the hub site, we set these up as the group of templates that we want to use on every single project. Now inside this project, I have a list of all of my different templates that I want to use. And what that then allows me to then be able to do is for me to be able to say, okay, I want to pick a weekly agenda. You'll notice up at the top here that Avero has started to name this document, which is a, something that's quite difficult to do um, because you never know what the next um, document is. Um, and also just keep maintaining that naming scheme is quite difficult. And we do know that a lot of um, our customers um, aren't doing this with documents when they, when they move to us. So you'll notice that at the top here, um, we start to get that um, title created there is still some information that we need to know so as I if you keep your eyes just up on the top here um, as I click weekly agenda what that will then do is it's now just said it's AG for agenda it's given A as an architect document and it's also named it as number 25 so what I can then do is I can then decide okay who am I going to send this to um, these are quick parts that are then added into the document. So these are all specific to your template and what you want to see within there. But ultimately, this is all around making sure that you've got firstly an easy way to populate the document, but also that you've got consistency in um, in those documents. I'll just call that live demo. So as I go through and choose the rest of the quick parts and then click, click create, what that will then do is it'll open up Word for me and um, the Word application will open as you can see within there and then it will apply that template and it'll also use the quick part information that i've just added into there so we use word um, to be able to then populate so that means that as i'm adding information into into here then um, it'll be then saving directly into word and also into Avero. so i can use all of the word functionality that, we, that i'm familiar with and the power that word has to create those documents i can also collaborate in real time with any of my colleagues um, and then when i then go through and save that that document is now saved so that document sits inside of word and i can access it just by going down onto my word documents if i was to right click there it would then allow me to open that or alternatively myself and any of the other project members can see inside of here, the document. So when I click on that, what it will then show me is the um, the document, which we've got in here, it's 0 0.3. Um, I can go through and continue to edit that current version, or I can go through and share that for review. Um, but for this demo, what I'm gonna do is actually publish that. And the reason this is important is that we go through, once we've chosen the status, we also can choose if we want to generate the PDF. So Avero will not only have the template that sits inside of there, it'll also be able to create that PDF for you. So it's one less step for you to have to do, which then means that when we then issue the information out, we then don't have the risk of potentially sending out a Word document. We've just sending out the PDF. So I'll show you that when we issue the information. So that just typically takes um, about 20 seconds or so. And then what you'll then have is that published information and and similar when, I, when I've got this highlighted within there, that will then go through and show all of the information, the different renditions, as you can see within there. So they've been, they've been created and we've successfully published that. So now I have both copies of that. So um, lots of different ways to get 
um, information into our arrow, whether it's just drag and drop, whether it's importing from uh, Revit or AutoCAD, whether it's creation of uh, documents directly from um, our arrow. There's loads of different ways to get the information in, but ultimately the, the really important part is that we brought into one location and then we've got a fantastic version in control that then that looks after that alongside the naming scheme that's then automatically applied. So I mentioned about um, our emails and the email functionality. So I'm just going to swap over to um, the uh, remote desktop that I use for doing the demonstrations on that. So no matter how sophisticated that we get with looking after all of our information um, within Artvero and issuing through Artvero, um, we know that we will receive lots and lots of information from other, other third parties because of collaborators on the projects that we've got. We also have conversations with people that we're working alongside. And the information in those conversations is sometimes just as important or maybe even more important than the document that's attached. Because sometimes it's a, um, a quick conversation that says, yes, let's proceed in that particular way. And that's something that you'd like to evidence later. So we, we make sure that what we do is, is give all of our customers the ability to be able to capture that. So how do we do that? So you'll see within um, within the emails, I've now got this new email that's been that's that's within here. And as I click on that, um, that I see because I'm familiar with that Vero, I see a few things. So firstly, that we've got some attachments and we've got the, the email conversation. So that's easy to see. But also, what I can see is that there isn't any green um, items against that. And what that shows to me immediately is that it's not been filed in Atvero because as soon as I filed in Atvero um, and filed an email, it will then come through and say that the email has been filed in Atvero and also that the attachment has been filed in Atvero. So I can see the two different colors within there representing whether there's an attachment that's against that. It also, using Atvero, means that if I've received an email, one of my colleagues has also received that same email, and they file that, I'll recognize that it doesn't need filing because it's already been filed from here. So at Vero, firstly, it lets me know, so it's, there's not a, more work for me to do because somebody else has done that, but also it means that there's no duplication of information um, sitting inside of um, the project, which is fantastic just for when you need to get the actual information rather than five copies of the same email. So going back to this one here, I know that I've not filed it. So first thing I want to do is just go to here and file that email. So what that then does is it brings up um, a little pop-up window for us. And this then lists out all the projects that I'm working on. So I'm going to pick the project. Down here, it's then saying, do I want to file the attachments as records? And do I want to file the email conversation? So yes, I do to both of those. And I'm just going to click File Selected. Very, very quickly, what Atvero just did was it went through and it checked to see whether it recognizes these documents and whether they were new documents to Atvero, i.e. a new record. And what it then did was it's gathered the, the that this is a new record, this is a new record, and that there's three different um, types of document that actually want to sit inside of the same record because these are just, this is a plan but this is a DWF, a DWG, and a PDF of the same plan. So Atvero is clever enough to recognize that and combine them together. So if I'm happy with all of that, then what I can then do is just click File Now, and then it will create that as a new record and give them all revision number uh, 01. If I wanted to, I can go through and I can change any of the detail inside of here and, and update that from this place. But for this one, I'm just going to file that. So now what's then happened is this is now in the background going to file that information into Atvero. So all of these different um, pieces of information are going to go in as records. And we also then will have the email conversation that will then be filed into the group. So what we'll then be able to see from inside of here is that as I go into the, uh, the oh, well, this particular um, project that I'm working on, now we've then got that information that's then been sent inside of uh, into Atvero. So I can see that information that will go through into Atvero. And that means that any of my colleagues can also see all of the historical emails um, that have been sent into Atvero and all of the, the detail that has then gone through into, um, into that particular project. So all the project related emails all sit inside there and anyone who's a member of that project can see it. 
And then the final bit around emails is just um, sometimes we find that um, when we're sending out emails, we want to we want to try and um, track every single piece of information that goes out. Um, but sometimes it's 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 hard to it's easy to forget that hard to remember. So what we have inside our Vero is the similar um, to what you just saw there. When I create an email um, and send that out to um, an an individual, so let's put John in there. Can't find. So send that to Joski, and then I'll just put through and test. When I go through and send, it's doing the same thing again. Pop up happens. I just choose the project, and then I go through and file and send. Um, or if I don't want to file it to a project it's not related, I can send without filing. So on both sides, whether that's an email that's coming in, whether that's an email that's going out as a a new email or a reply. Avero is going to capture all that information. It's going to file the information into Avero, and it's also going to put that into the group as well. So you can see now that's now been updated so that I can see that that has now been filed inside of Avero, and I'm happy with that. And any of my other colleagues that was, would, have, if they were CC'd on that or two um, line on that, they would also get that. So really easy. Um, to um, to look after manage and manage emails. That's that's really one of the highlights of Avero is is making that nice and simple for people to then be able to file away that project related emails. So just going back into Avero, um, what we have inside of here is uh, the ability to then be able to go through and I'm just going to put this back to um, my. Uh, company view so i can also go through we've got an approval process so any of the information that has then been sent into um at vero we can also go through an approval process where the person who's lined up as the approver will receive an email they'll then be able to see that information inside at vero approve and reject um, and then add any markup files if they're using a tool to do that or if they've been physically marked that up so they can then be added into here we then also have um, our received files section um, inside of here where we can then see all of the received files, any of the transmittals. So if I just went straight to, to us, you can see here's the files that we just filed through um, and that we just sent into Avero. So they're all of the ones that were sent through there. And you can see then received 15th of the second. So immediately we're, we're seeing all of those. Those files then will again go back into the record section. Um, and now I'm just going to sit inside of Avero, and you can see these are the these are the ones that we sent inside of here. These these three records, um, and I can see that with a revision zero, um, and I can also see the date that we did that as well. The reason that they're showing in different color is that there's still some information that we want to add to there that we've asked Avero to to be aware of. So all I need to then do is come into here, and I can add in simple stuff like the zone level type role, um, whatever it is that I ask Avero to to look to to ask for. Um, and once I've done that, that then the color removes and it goes back to being white. And that's an important part of Avero is that once they're white, they are then ready for issue. So you can actually issue that information out. So um, talking about document issue, we can um, we we can gather all of this information together and send out any of that so this is the transmittal of information um, through document issue so there's a few different ways i can do that i can either think okay these are the different files that i want to go through and i want to then create a new issue with those or alternatively i can think there's a pack of information that i'm going to send out so let's use the example of i'm going to send out to a client um, and the client every single week wants to see all the latest updated versions so what I can then do is just set that up so that, that automatically happens. So what I'm going to do is just deselect all of those. And I'm actually just going to through, go through and create a new issue without any records selected. So when I come into here um, and um, put the issue description, I'm also going to put the uh, purpose of the issue. So I'm just going to put that um, for review and comment. Any notes that I want to um, include on the transmittal sheet. So this is a description of the the information contained in the transmittal. 
I'm then going to choose the different te template that I want to send this out as. Um, so when the recipient receives it, how do I want that to look? Um, and then also then, is there a contract distribution list? So you can send this out to one person or you could send this out to a group of people. So maybe it's using the example that I used before, I'm going to send this to the client leadership team. So now what it's then done is it brought all those people from the client leadership team into there. Now, the way that we suggest that um, our customers use Avero is to just have this one way of issuing because of the traceability and, and, and being able to go back and track exactly what's happened with any of the documents. But we know that there's sometimes a few different ways that that one that issue should happen. So we can go directly into BIM 360 via the connector that we have and we send those into the BIM 360 from here. We could export as a zip file. Um, we could email as the attached files, but they're all quite um, uh they're all quite, other than BIM 360, they're all quite old-fashioned ways of sharing information. Our preferred way, and, and the way that most of our customers um, do this, is through our Vero Checkpoint. At Vero Checkpoint, and I'm going to select that so I can show you it, is our document sharing portal. So it allows us to be able to share information in the similar way to WeTransfer works, um, but all contained inside of our Vero. And it also gives us a really um, great history of that um, transmittal, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So we've got that set up within there. Um, we haven't actually got any record selected. As I said, I wasn't going to do that because I'm just going to pick up this, which is the record distribution list. This is just the weekly distribution list that I've set up. This is the information that my client wants to see every single week. So now it's brought in the very latest revision of that information. It's defaulted to PDF. I can share the, the files if I wish to do that, but typically I wouldn't do that. And then all I'm going to do is go through and create and transmit that. So now every single one of those recipients is going to receive a transmittal. The transmittal document is created automatically by Avero, and they'll then be um, given a link that will then allow them to then be able to download that information. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute or two. Now, by doing this the same way in creating the issue and sending it, however it is, whether it's gone to BIM 360 or you emailed it or you went to check uh, via checkpoint, that then gives you um, the the history of all of that information. So you can see all of the different issues. But then also we can see a formal issue register. So this is something that um, if you are using a formal issue register um, at the moment, you will recognize the difficulty and, and potentially even the, the pain point of doing that in that we're gathering all of the different documents that have then been sent out. We're trying to understand which um, uh, who they were sent to, what the revision number was, um, and trying to then put that all together in one place makes it very difficult. So Vero does that for you. Um, so you can see here that we've got the, the issues, the recent issues that we've done. We'll see when we did those issues, who issued that. We can see the different documents and all of the documents that are contained within those last uh, and as I've got it set up, last 14 issues. Um, I can see all of the different revisions of that. And down at the bottom, we can also see who was sent those. So how, who was sent them in each revision, oh, sorry, in each issue, and then also how they received that. So you can see that I use Checkpoint um, for all of those, but if you say that in there, if it was email, we'd say that in there as well. So this means that we're not having to try and gather together all of the information that's been shared and then trying to then make sure that that's correct. We're actually just issuing through one process. That means that then AppBero will build this up itself automatically and totally remove that need to then have to build a manual um, issue sheet or issue register. So you may have heard um, just in the background that I received an email. And actually, as I go back into my emails, um, let's think about this as the recipient's email inbox. So as I go into here, um, I can go through and show the, um, so I'm the recipient of that transmittal that we just sent it out, that issue that we sent out. So as I click on it, you'll see that the template that we've got is sitting inside of here. The transmittal document has been built by Avero and is attached to that. And that within the content of this layout, we can see these are the different records that we have sent. Um, so inside of here, I can see I'm now the recipient, I've got five different um, documents that I can then see, but I can't see them from here because we want the person to then go through. Um, so once I click on view transmittal, what that then does is it takes me through to um, my 
um, portal. So this is all customized. It'll have your logo on there and it'll have your image in the background. But all the recipient has to do is just click that uh, button, which was then to just to ask for the multi-factor authentication. As I come back into here, you'll see immediately that's already been sent through. So I can just grab that, take that um, MFA. And then when I go back into here, just add that in. So no, your recipients don't have to download anything. They don't have to sign up for anything. This is just um, a really quick process for you sharing that information. And you can see here now I've got access to all of the information. When I click it, it goes into my downloads folder on my local machine. If I just wanted to download them because there's a hundred different files in there, just download that as a zip. And then I can then go through and I can see this is now on my machine. So from the recipient's perspective, it's really easy to, to access the information. But from your side, what that then gives to you is when we go back into the transmittals and we go back to that issue that we've just created here, I can see now that, that we successfully transmitted the issue. When I go to checkpoint, we'll see the two different people that we sent those to. And we can see that John Smith has downloaded all the files. We can see that for the other recipient there, is the transmittal has been sent, they haven't downloaded it. So they've just not got to that just yet. But if I go to John Smith and I click on the information, then what you'll then see is that I can actually see that time and date stamped, click the uh, checkpoint link, entered multi-factor authentication, viewed one file, sorry, viewed files, downloaded one file, and then downloaded all the files in zip. So this means now that I'll always have that proof that that person fully accessed that um, and has that information. So that if I ever need to go back and show that at some point, hopefully not, but it's nice and easy for me to be able to recognize that, um, that firstly, by going to the formal issue register, that that information was sent, that I can then see that it would be sent in issue 53, and then I'll be able to then see exactly who received that. So all really nice and tied together um, really, really well. So um, one other bit that I just want to go through um, with you is um, how the file searching works. So um, we're just going to go down into the file search down there. So let's pick a word of fire because I know I use that quite regularly. Um, and what that will allow me to then do is it brings up here any document that has the word fire in the title or also, which is fantastic, actually inside that document. So there's um, a, a tool that Avero uses, um, which is an OCR tool. And what that means is that it will then read the information that sits inside of that uh, piece of that record, that file, that email, um, and it will then look for that particular word or that piece of information. So I'll show you exactly how that works. If I go down to this one here, um, I know that the word fire is somewhere inside of this. This is quite a complex document. Um, so what I can then do is I'm going to go um, and have a look at that. So let's just zoom in a little bit further so I can start to see, show that. So I know that the word fire is in there because it's been brought up inside of here, but I can also go through and choose the word fire there. And what that will then do is it will take me to here. So it shows that there's only there's one of one and it's up here. So it's now been highlighted in blue to show me that the word fire is inside of there. So it makes finding information, even in a particularly complex information uh, piece of information, um, very easy. We could also do something like, and I'm just going to use scale because I know that there's lots of them in there. And it's told me there's now 17 scales inside and I can see it's then here, it's up there. Um, and as I go through, we can see that the word scale is highlighted and all I need to do is just click next on there and Albero will find that for you. So it's a really easy way to then be able to look at any of the information that you've got inside of here, search for it within there. Um, you can use people's names, you can search by um, by the individual or by the, uh, the, the word as I've been doing inside of there. At that point, you can also see um, the record. So I can click on the record tab and that will actually show me the record that sits inside of the records. And if it was ever issued, which I don't think this one has been, I'd click on there and it would then tell me the issue number as we go down there. So um, again, brilliant way of just tying all that information back and seeing what's happened within there. 
And we can add some filters against that. So maybe I actually want to search across every single project. Well, that's fine. Just remove that. And then now I'm searching across every single project. You'll see just here, got this one, ITP1. We've got this one that's uh, ends in 159 with 456. So we're searching across every single project that I have the ability to look for. I can see the file names within there. I can choose by file type. And I can also choose, Is it? I just want to look for records, for files, for emails. And then I can do that in there. So the search functionality is really powerful. It's really, really quick to be able to find the information you need to see um, inside of Avero. And, um, and it does all of that automatically. You don't have to add tags to that. Avero, once the information is then sitting inside, will then go through and, um, and it will then scan all the detail inside that so that roughly about 10, 15 minutes after that information has been added in, you'll then be able to come and do this exact same thing. So choose whatever word it is that you want to see from in there. So um, fantastic and really deep search functionality that you can then see exactly from here. And, and of course, within your emails, um, you can just use um, the email search that's up at the top here so i can go through and search for anything that i want to see inside of that particular project so i could go through and search there um so um my preferred option is always to go into here and go and do the file search one more thing i'm just going to go through and and show is um Avero's integrated into teams so if you use teams um for um for running your and let me just load that again. Let me still pop up from Microsoft. It's not the perfect time to do that in the middle of a demo. <laughs> um, but what this will allow you to do inside of Teams is, and let me just see if I can switch backwards and forwards from that, is I can actually use that Vero completely inside of here. It's not letting me do that just now. But what you'll see at the background, if you, if you can do, is that we'll then have um, the project and up here, we have a little Vero tab. And actually, all that that allows um, from there is just a full view of all of the record section, exactly the same layout within here. Allows you to look at versioning history. Allows you to look at uh, um, all of the individual records. It allows you to go through and search. It allows you to look at the email inbox. You can actually run 99% of Vero directly from Teams. So... Um, don't have to do that. There's definitely some for some of our, our new customers, that's phase two of, of rollout. But for others who are actively using Teams at the moment, it's a fantastic little thing, functionality. Um, so apologies for not being able to show you that there. I'm going to just blame that on Microsoft wanting me to upgrade to the new Teams. Um, and this is the, the curse of doing a live demo, I guess. So um, going back into Abero, um, we have loads of different uh, additional links that we can go into project calendars and, and OneNote. Um, but um, we can definitely, if you want to see a little bit more, we can go through that. One of either myself or one of the co my colleagues will, will talk you through there. Um, final little bit that I'm going to show you. I've got a another project that I've got open here. If I just go through into um, checklists, what we can run inside of Vero, because I'm just going to go through, is actually we can we can have an evidence-based checklist that sit inside of Vero. So the way that these work is I've created a checklist based on Reba stages. So you can see here that we've got this all of the different um, subtasks that sit inside stage one. So things like the um, within here, the fee proposal issued to the client, fee schedule prepared. Um, and what that allows me to then do as I'm going through and look at each of these um, different um, tasks is I can go through and I can add um, an actioner to that. So somebody who's going to be actioning it. I can also add a reviewer to there. I can then put start dates, due dates. I can put descriptions and notes against that. And ultimately what we're trying to then do is get evidence-based information that's aligned back to some dates and that then sits back in here where we can then see exactly what the information is and whether we're on track for completing that. So it allows us to gather all of the evidence-based um, information on every single stage as we're progressing through Reba, wherever my particular business starts or stops, whether we're full life cycle from stage one right the way through or whether we just join in at stage two or stage three. So, 
that's the final little bit of Alvaro um, that I wanted to talk you through. Um, I'm just going to quickly just have a quick look and see if there's any questions that we've got. Um, don't believe there's any questions that anybody sent through. What we'll do is um, we'll, we'll get a, uh, one of our one of my colleagues or myself will follow up just after this with um, an email and also potentially a phone call just to see um, how you found the demo. And also if you have any questions, just let them know. So thank you very much for that. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time today and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.